Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. My name's Rich Ling, as you can see by the, uh, the agenda over there. And I want to talk a little bit today um, sort of in, in a broader sense, and only at the end I'm going to come back to information technology and computers and mobile phones and those sorts of things. But I think the main focus that I want to bring in starts with the question that uh, the French uh, sociologist Emile Durkheim asked, is what holds society together? We touched on this in sort of a, a, a little bit, of, uh, a little bit uh, earlier today, but for me, that's been one of the, the things that's been motivating my thinking for um, oh, the last year or two. And now I'm starting to work through this. This, is, this question actually is, if you want the sort of the fundamental question for sociologists, that's it. What is it that holds society together? And what is the impact of technology on social cohesion? We've been exposed to a lot of discussion lately about social capital and and uh, uh, communities of practice, those sorts of things, that's saying that perhaps things are getting frazzled a little bit. Perhaps things are falling apart. We don't really know which way it's going. In addition, there's a lot of people that are starting to talk about individualism. For example, uh, Giddens and Ulrich Beck and, and, and Scott Lash have, have written quite a bit about that. And Ulrich Beck is perhaps the most pessimistic of them all. He even talks about the institutionalization of individualism which is kind of an oxymoronic type of thing to talk about. But a lot of people are talking about where is that balance going? Is it going towards collective cohesion or is it going more further away towards individualism? And that's, that's one of the, the motivating factors for a lot of the things that I've been thinking about lately. If you go into this a little bit more, if you think a little bit about what Durkheim says, the thing he says that holds society together well, there's two things. One is the fear of, uh, of external threat, which, which brings society together. But the real one, the one that I think he's most remembered for, is ritual. And he studied uh, um, uh, uh, Aborigines in, in Australia and wanted to find out how it was that they used ritual, in every, uh, not in everyday life, but specialized life, to... Uh, to increase and keep social cohesion. And so in that context, I thought, OK, I'm going to be one of the first ones after lunch. Uh, maybe we could dim the lights a little bit. I can talk a little bit more quietly <laughs> so that all of you can just relax a little bit in, in about 10 minutes. But I thought, OK, don't do that. Let's, let's do a little ritual here. And rituals, they're easy to do. I'm just going to. No, 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 no. <laughs> Come on. Come on. OK. iPod. 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 OK, there's our little ritual there. That's a ritual. We did one. Not all of you. Some of you did. The rest of you are asleep. But that fulfilled all of the, all of the elements of a ritual. There was a mutual focus. There's what Durkheim called effervescence, the sense that we're doing something together. We're, there's a cogn we're cognizant of us as a group. In addition, there's a power relationship. I'm the one up here that was sort of determining the cadence, and you all were following along. So there's, Randall Collins talks about this a lot in terms of the power aspects of, of ritual. Uh, and it results in solidarity. That's the important thing. It results in a type of solidarity. How does it do that? Because you all out there, you're clapping. You're being obeisant. You're saying, he's doing it, and he's doing it, I'm doing it. We're all being obeisant to that guy up there that's making us clap. That creates a bond of solidarity. So now we have the cult of iPod here that uh, we can, you know, we'll reflect on in our old age and feel like we were part of something. In addition, by introducing that object, iPod, 
I introduced a totem. It becomes an object that is symbolically imbued by the, by the, by the ritual itself. And that is the point of a totem. It can, it can be the form of a bear or something like that in, in the aboriginal society. But that becomes the thing that carries that, that, that symbolic solidarity from occasion to occasion for Durkheim. So that's, that's part of how social solidarity comes together. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take that to Goffman, Irving Goffman, the sociologist from the 50s and 60s in the US. The thing that Goffman did that says Durkheim was right about rituals, the thing he was wrong about is that they're every day. Everyday rituals, they're all over the place. I can stick out my hand and you know what's going on. We've got effervescence, we've got the whole thing going there. There's a great ritual we just did there. Giving a talk, uh, eating lunch, doing all kinds of things. Okay, now I come back to the main point of is, is society cohesive or is it falling apart? And that's the discussion that you've seen a lot of in terms of Putnam's bowling alone, You've seen it uh, in, in the communities of, of practice. We saw that, you know, that, that was a lot about what the gaming stuff was about. Here are communities that have a type of solidarity. Um, but I'm going to make the, the proposition that mobile communication is better at developing social cohesion than is uh, traditional internet uh, type of uh, interaction. That's, that's a, I'm, I'm just going to throw that out. I don't have any basis for saying that. Uh, but in, in some of the research that we've been doing, we're starting to see that. We see that mobile communication allows for a type of interaction, especially coordination of informal types of interaction, that allows for the development and the maintenance of that cohesion in informal situations. Not necessarily maintaining your bowling league, not necessarily maintaining the PTA that, that uh, that uh, uh, um, uh, 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 Putnam talked about, uh, but, but in terms of maintaining that, uh, that form of social cohesion. I say I'm running out of time, so I'm going to bow out, and thank you very much.